All right, folks, here we go. Little lecture called Intro to Web Writing. So let me start by telling you why I include this assignment in our curriculum. Um, probably comes as no surprise to you that uh, businesses and organizations are turning to the web more and more to help with their messaging. So that includes uh, communicating directly with their consumer, put, providing information. Uh, also, it relates to marketing and branding. So uh, websites are a critical place where businesses are uh, doing a lot of important work. And so I think it's really important for us then to think about what good websites are, what they look like, how they function, and how they relate to the user. So a lot of what we're going to talk about here is going to be uh, pretty intuitive for you because we're going to be talking about purpose and audience a lot. And so we want to keep those two things in mind. Uh, what is the purpose of the website and who are the website's audiences? And notice I said audiences and not audience because websites, uh, because they live in the big bad wild west of the web, uh, have multiple audiences. Uh, your web writing assignment is uh, fundamentally broken into two parts. Uh, in your first, the first part of your web writing assignment, you'll just be looking at a small business website and you'll be sort of assessing uh, what's going wrong? How is it failing the needs or expectations of either the user or the business? So on the one hand, users go to websites with very specific tasks in mind. They want to find the price for something. They want to find the rules about something. They want to find out information about a product. They want to make a consumer decision. And so we want to make sure that our websites facilitate that as easily and as intuitively as possible. On the other hand, uh, businesses create websites to market goods and services. Uh, they have websites in place to build a brand uh, and to keep their consumers updated. And so we really want to be thinking about, with those things in mind, how is the website that you're analyzing uh, falling short? So in what ways is it not doing a good job of marketing a uh, good or a service? Uh, in what ways is it not intuitive? In what ways does the writing not engage the reader? And so those are things that we're going to be thinking about. In stage two of your web writing assignment, you'll actually be uh, creating a little mock-up or a, a, a sample redesign of the website where you show me what you think the website ideally ought to, ought to look like. Now, the key here is that I don't expect you to leave this class as a web designer, um, but I do expect you'll leave this class with a slightly better sense of how to approach writing for the web. And to do that, um, it's going to take a little bit of reading and it's going to take this lecture to sort of give us the right frame of mind uh, to approach this assignment. But I think you'll be um, happy to know that a lot of what we're going to talk about are things that we've already addressed so far in the class. Things like audience and purpose, things like uh, the you attitude, um, and, and those types of things. So uh, bear with me and uh, let's get started. So the goals for this lecture are to understand the differences and similarities between print and web writing, to appreciate the value web writing uh, has in business and professional settings, and to develop a user-centered framework for web writing, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so um, it's kind of my philosophy that web writing and print writing are not that different. And uh, that's because we consume so much web writing. A lot of what we uh, read now is on our phone or it's on a website and we're pulling it up on our laptop. So uh, we're pretty accustomed to what writing on the web ought to look like. And I actually think that that's kind of bled into our print writing a little bit that we expect a certain experience. We expect it to be intuitive. We expect it to be dynamic. Uh, we expect it to be easy to scan, which are all things that we know uh, web users uh, tend to prefer or tend to think about. Um, so while I think there are a lot of similarities and we've sort of talked about those, um, you know, one of the key similarities is the idea of crap. Actually, crap is a, uh, is a tool that was uh, in part developed by Robin Williams, uh, not the hairy armed uh, comic, but uh, the graphic designer who wrote a book called The Non-Designer's Design Book. And crap is something that virtually every web designer would be taught or web developer would be taught because it's a way of thinking about the architecture of a page, how it's going to be read, um, and how it will be navigated. So let's get started. So there are some differences between print and web writing. Um, web writing is usually more task-oriented, so um, you know, unlike when you sit down with a book um, or other type of long form piece of writing uh, where you're kind of reading from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner and you're reading linearly and sequentially on the web we're not doing that we're generally speaking more task oriented we're there to find a very particular piece of information and we get frustrated when we can't find it uh, any of you who have tried to find the academic calendar for instance on the KBCC website 
probably get pretty frustrated because it's not in the compartment where you would expect it to be, it's not intuitive, uh, etc. So uh, we need to keep that in mind, that users need, need to be able to find common pieces of information or uh, they need to be able to do common tasks without that much of a hassle. Uh, so that's one thing that we really, really want to keep in mind. So uh, for this week, I'm going to ask that you look at a sample website for the Bunny Clark Fishing Charters. And so when you're sitting down to, to sort of develop a website um, or really any kind of document, you kind of want to sit down and, and you want to ask yourself, what does my reader need to know? What are the likely questions uh, that my reader is going to ask? or what are the common problems that my reader is going to be confronted with, and you want to build outward from there. So that's that's principally what you're going to be doing. You're going to be thinking about, okay, if somebody's on a fishing charter website, what types of things are they going to be probably thinking about or interested in? And then you're going to see how those things uh, sort of uh, accrue and how they line up, and that's going to give you some sense of how well that website's performing. So, for instance, if it's really hard to find out what species of fish they catch on this boat, that's probably not good because that's probably a question that folks are going to have. What kind of fish am I going to catch? Or they might be interested um, in something a little bit more logistical, like how many people can I bring? Uh, so they should be able to find those types of things very quickly. If they can't, then we have a problem and it's likely that folks are just going to move on and they're going to go to another charter where it's easier to figure that out. So those are the, that's kind of the thought process that I want you to uh, go through. Is a, and that, you know, that relates back to what we've been talking about all semester in terms of being reader-centered, but in this case, uh, it's reader-slash-user-centered, and we want to really think about how the website's likely to be used, and we want to build outward from there. Um, a, kind of a metaphor I like to use when I think about websites, and I didn't make this up by any stretch of the imagination, is architecture. So uh, an architect tries to... Uh, create a building um, that facilitates certain types of activities um, and that uh, anticipates how the space will be used. And we want to be architects too on the web and we want to create um, an architecture of information that makes sense given the likely tasks, questions, etc. that our readers will have. So that's really a key difference and that's something that we'll be looking at. Another key difference is that web writing just tends to be more interactive. So there's more dynamic things that we can do. We can include videos. Uh, we can include links. We can include pictures and diagrams. And we can have mouse over effects and those types of things. We can have slideshows. So that's something that's fundamentally different that we can do and leverage in the interest of helping our reader and in building our brand. So that's something to think about. Web writing is also much more competitive. So readers are just completely overwhelmed um, in digital spaces. So you know anybody who's been on Facebook knows that there's ads everywhere, there's links everywhere, there's pictures everywhere. Um, and so web writing, uh, for better or worse, is in sort of a busy space. And so uh, we just have to keep that in mind in terms of uh, you know what our page looks like and how it functions. Um, you know, this, this is just something to keep in, uh, keep in mind. Web writing is also harder to read. So just by virtue of the fact that it's on a digital screen makes it harder to read and takes a physical toll on your eyes. So we want to limit the amount of text that we have. Um, we don't want to hit people with text walls. It's, it's, uh, you're probably going through this process right now as you look at these slides. Uh, it's just more difficult to read and it's more taxing. So we want to keep text to a minimum um, and we really want to isolate the reader's focus when we can. Web writing is more likely to be scammed, so that goes back to our task-oriented bullet point. Uh, folks are, are trying to find very particular types of information, and so we need to use crap, and we need to compartmentalize information. We need to have a clear structure and really good organization, so we really want to think about the interface that we're building. And this is something that we're already familiar with, uh, given the work that we've been doing on our resumes, which fundamentally are an interface that is scanned, that uh, requires compartmental compartmentalization. So um, if you go to a website and it's not easy to scan, that's a problem and that's something that you can identify in your web writing assignment. Another thing to keep in mind is that web writing is open to the world. So I mean, uh, that sounds kind of crazy, but it's true that uh, sometimes it's hard to anticipate who your audience is. So, you know, for instance, it would be easy to create uh, a print document that goes to one audience and another print document that goes to another audience and another print document that goes to another audience. But on the web, everything is sort of widely accessible unless you password protect it. Um, and so that's important to think about. And the other thing that's really interesting about writing for the web is that generally speaking, you're trying to satisfy the needs of multiple audiences. Or a, or a relatively broad audience with one communication. So the example I like to give for this is the KVCC website. Um, you know, it's really easy to think, well, you know, 
current students use the KVCC website, but that belies the fact that uh, prospective students use it, uh, community partners use it, faculty members use it, staff use it, um, accre accrediting bodies use it, uh, local business partners use it. So there's a lot of people who go there to find information. Guidance counselors go there, high schools go there. And so it's kind of a challenge because we've got to satisfy the needs of all those audiences uh, and we have to maintain all those other things that we've talked about. We need it to be concise. We need it to be easy to scan. We need it to be intuitive. We can't, you know, have information overload. So that's why uh, writing for the web is kind of an art and a science. And then the other thing that web writing is is that it's linkable. So people can use hyperlinks to basically create a choose-your-own-adventure type experience for readers um, where they can go off and get more information or go look at another resource and those types of things. So those are just some, some of the differences. There, of course, there are more, um, but they give us a backdrop against which to look at this. So basically, we have a more dynamic set of tools that we can use uh, to meet the needs of a reader who is much more task-oriented, who's there to do some work, to find some information, to learn about this company. Um, and likewise, we have those same tools and expectations to build our brand, uh, and to market our, our product or service uh, in a way that uh, meets all the criteria that we just talked about. Um, but it's one thing to look at the differences, but then it's important to remember that there are certain things that are just not different between print and web writing. Uh, the first of which is that it's always reader-centered. Reader uh, you know, it always has to be focused, especially in a business or professional setting where customers and clients are expensive to, to get and attract and we need to keep them. Um, it's easy for us to fixate on the company or the organization or the product. Uh, but really what we want to be doing is engaging our reader and showing them the benefits of what we do and how we do it. Um, websites have to be concise and relevant. That goes back to uh, being easy to scan. But uh, so many websites that I see just include uh, just a litany of unnecessary information and they lose their focus. So that's why it's so important for us to, to start with our user and their likely tasks and their needs and build around that because that prevents us from including stuff that's not relevant. So I'll give you a really good example. And this is no, no fault to anybody. It's a common mistake, but a lot of folks have an About Us page on their website, right? Um, and so if we go back to our main goals here, which are to market um, our product or service and to meet the needs of our reader, your About Us page should talk about maybe your unique selling propositions or the benefits, but so many small business websites in particular on their About Us page have a 17-page story about the formation of the company. Um, well, Aunt Jane bought a piece of land in Jackman in 1902, and you know, 17 pages later you find out that in 2007, you know, they're still doing business or whatever. Um, and that doesn't really, that doesn't solve a problem or meet the needs of any of your readers. So does it really need to be there? Um, and is it really reader centered? Not really, because it tends to fixate on the, uh, on the company and not on the reader. So uh, you're going to want to be on the lookout for content like that, that sort of deviates from the task at hand. Um, or the tasks at hand. Um, just like our resumes and just like other documents that you produce, um, web writing has to be intuitive and easy to use. The information should be in neat, easily discernible compartments. So it should be really easy to find the information that you need, just in the same way that it should be easy to figure out where you went to college or what your last job was or uh, what technical abilities you have on your resume. Um, you know, all writing is resourceful, and so you got to use all the tools at your disposal. And if you're not using all the tools to solve your problems uh, or your reader's problems, then maybe you're, maybe you're leaving stuff on the table. So I want you to think about that when you're, especially when you're doing your mock-up. What types of content could you include here to help tell the story of the company, to help highlight the unique selling propositions, to show the benefits, to create engagement, those types of things. You know, uh, whether it's your resume, whether it's a brochure. Uh, whether it's a letter that you're writing, it has to be attractive. If it looks sloppy, guess what? Um, that's, that's your brand, and that's how you're going to be uh, interpreted. And, and uh, that's just the sad reality of it. Um, so it has to look good, and it has to be easy to read. You know, Literally, it has to be easy on the eyes. So those are things that all good writing has to do, but certainly it's true on the web. So I'll leave you with this. Um, and this is sort of how I think about a good website. And it kind of, you know... Um, puts a bow on everything that we've talked about. You'll notice this triangle here, and at the base of the triangle you have the business goals. And the business goals are to market, to inform, to, you know, 
get new customers. Basically, the business goal is to put money in the bank, right? And on the other side, on the other base, you have the user's needs, answering questions, taking action, solving uh, problems, etc. The things that the user needs to do, the information that ne the user needs in order to convert into a sale, um, etc. Well, where those two things meet, that's where your website is. It's kind of the sweet spot. Uh, and so your web website shouldn't be too focused on the business goals. Um, and it should really represent uh, a meeting of the business and the user. And that's how I want you to think about this. And that's how I want you to approach this assignment. So in sum, uh, not to overcomplicate things, but you are going to go out. You are going to look at a small business website. You are going to start by thinking about what does this website even need to do? So if it's a restaurant, what are the goals? What, what does a good restaurant website do? What, what information should it include? Uh, you know, uh, how should it operate? What, what are its parts, etc.? And then you're going to look at, at, at the current state of affairs and you're going to try to think about what's going wrong. So in what ways does it not meet the business goals? So maybe it gives a poor impression. Maybe it's not good branding. Um, maybe it's not up to date. So maybe the information is just poor. Maybe it's hard for a user to find out information. And you're going to start to index these things and you're going to report those um, in stage one of your web writing assignment. Then in stage two, you're actually going to take it a step further and you're going to show me what you think that website ought to look like. So for instance, what types of pages should it have? What should be on the home page? Uh, you know, so if it's a, if it's a restaurant website, what should what should the first impression um, be? And so that's what we're really going to work on. But again, I can't stress enough that it's so important for you to work from a user centered framework. So uh, what does the user need to do, and how can you facilitate that as easily and as swiftly as possible? Because users are going to appreciate that, and ultimately, that's going to come back and affect the bottom line. Thanks a lot.